come, go. I can. All right, then go. Don't just sit there gloating. Put your word down. What's that? What's that? B U M bum. <laughs> Two letters scored, other words scored. That's uh, that's sixteen and fourteen thirty. What filthy minds you have got. What's wrong with that? It's vulgar, that's what's wrong with it. Honestly, this is supposed to be an erudite game calculated to increase one's word power. And just like that, bored. It's disgusting. There's not one word you put down that can be used in decent company. There's not one word of more than four letters. There's nothing more than a display of calculated filth. Yeah, but they still count, don't they? Not like that. Yes, they do. If they're in the dictionary, they count, and bums in the dictionary. Your go. I'm not so sure that bum is in the dictionary. I mean, you don't think all them professors up at Oxford is going to waste their time discussing the merits and the meanings of the word bum. <laughs> I don't use dirty words like that. My bum's not dirty. <laughs> I mean, my bum is the American for tramp. Ha, ha, well, that's how I got you. That's how I got you. Because you're not allowed to use colloquialisms or slang. All right, I'll stick my English bum. <laughs> which is the part of your anatomy that swells out the back of your trousers. <laughs> you go. Oh, this is ridiculous. I mean, how can you compete with this sort of thing? Well, I thought this game has got to degenerate into a mere catalogue of crudities. I would never have started it in the first place. You're just not because I'm winning. Oh, we don't care what sort of words you put down. That's not difficult, is it? I mean, look, look, look at the difference in, in the quality of my words and your words. Well, at least I'm having a go at keeping the tone up. Yeah, but you're not winning, are you? And that's what it's all about, mate. Have you got an S? Supposing I have. Well, you could stick it on the end of my bum and make it bum. <laughs> I'd rather not if you don't mind. <laughs> well, at least I can clean your word up. B U M bum, your word. B U M P S bum, pss, my word. That's my three, I'm on your three, I'm on three, I want to level. Isn't that lovely? Bumps. That S has let me in nice. S O D sob. <laughs> Three, oh, one, D, two, three, six all together. I'm not allowing sod. Why not? No wrong with that. Piece of turf. Shakespeare uses it. I don't care if Barbara Cartland uses it. <laughs> hey, that's not the way you meant it. You meant it as a swear word. You always mean them as swear words. Because you are dirty and crude and, and horrible. You're a go. I can't go. I can see one. I'm not interested. Have you got a blank? I'm not telling you. You can make a K and stick it on the end no. of the <laughs> I will not stoop to using obscenities. Besides, you've already used it. You can't go, can you? I didn't say that. I think I shall change all of my letters. You can't, there are only four left. Well, I shall change three of them then. <laughs> oh, well, I was Polish, I suppose I could have a stab at it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go, can you? No, I can't. I can. C R U M. Well, what's that? Crumb. Crumb? <laughs> what you get in bed when you've been eating biscuits? <laughs> you don't spell it like that. Don't you? There's a B on the end of it. Is there? Well, no wonder you keep putting up filthy words. They're the only ones you can spell. <laughs> That's a smart go. No, no, well, I think I can still go. Uh, what's that word you've got there? Well, that's cut. Hey. C R U M P E T. <laughs> Crumpet. <laughs> Which you also get in bed. That's <laughs> uh, 13. Triple letter, double word. That's uh, 29 altogether. That's. Uh, 523 I've got and, and 56 to you. <laughs> well, you won't make anything out of them. There's those two K's and an N's I just threw away. Da 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 that's 535 points I've won by. At a penny a point, that's five pounds 35 new pence shell me. Try another game? No. It's a good game, isn't it? It is. When it's played properly. Not when it's played by dirty old men like you. 
Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Every time there's a knock on the door, you say, Who's that? <laughs> That's a very annoying habit you've got. I mean, I don't know what it is. I mean, I've got x-ray eyes. I shall cut to the door. I shall open it. If it's got anything remotely to do with you, I shall tell you who it is. When they don't open it, nobody will know, will they? It's all right, all right. Don't knock the bleeding door down. Oh, hello, Vicar. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Septo. Inclement weather, is it not? Oh, yes. It's most inclement, yes. It is on nights like these that one's thoughts go out to our sailors and fishermen. Yes. Yes, indeed. It must be very empty out there. I wouldn't fancy it. Not I, indeed, no. But yeah, we all take a bit of fish for granted, don't we? Oh, we do, we do. Yes, indeed we do. Yeah. Hardly a thought to be spare for those brave souls. Quite, quite. How much do you want? Um, <laughs> I, I, I thought he was collecting. Oh, goodness me, no. Oh, you better come inside, then. <laughs> Thank you. That's most kind of you. Who was it? The vicar. Oh, God, is he on the ear all again? <laughs> oh, my God. He knows you're here. <laughs> it's just a joke. <laughs> uh, would you like to go inside? Thank you very much. He's had two bob already off me this year. He must think we're made of money. Oh, uh, oh God. <laughs> Hello, vicar. I didn't recognise you with your clothes on. <laughs> In your suit. Oh, it's a nice one, isn't it? It's not one of ours, is it? I beg your pardon? You didn't get it out of that sack for we sent you from Bangladesh. Father, the vicar is hardly likely to go nicking clothes intended for refugees. No, I didn't mean anything. I wouldn't blame him if he did. I mean, his need is as great as theirs. He hasn't got much. I mean... Uh, Father, would you like to go and make a cup of tea? It's most inclement out. Oh, you don't want tea, vicar. You want something to warm you up? Hey, uh, hey. There's a nice little drop of gold watch. Thank you very much. Oh, God bless you and the devil miss you. <laughs> Don't give me one, will you? Would <laughs> you like to sit down for a quick minute? Oh, thank you. Oh, Scrabble, my favourite game. You've just finished, I see. <laughs> High standards. We haven't got the command of words like what you have got. Perhaps you would both like to come round to the vicarage one evening. My wife is a very keen player. We could make up a foursome. Oh, I'd like that. I don't, know, I don't think that's a very good idea. You've been much too good for us. You crucify us. I mean... <laughs> As you need. <laughs> oh, greatly improved, thank you. The vicar's had a touch of housemaid's knee. Has he? Oh, I'm sorry. An occupational hazard, I'm afraid. One has to spend a great deal of time kneeling in my game. <laughs> you want to get your missus to get you some pads put up in the trousers. All she wants is uh, one of her paddy bras cut it in two and strap it around your knees. It fits lovely. I knew a carpet layer once swore by them, and he reckoned oh, that... Father, I'm sure that the vicar is more than capable of making his own medical arrangements without laying himself open to a charge of transvestism. <laughs> Would you like to go and put the blanket on the horse and go to bed? No. I want to talk to the vicar. Then kindly moderate your language. Uh, to what do we owe the pleasure of this visit? Now, if it is about me not uh, coming to church, I feel I have made my position quite clear about that in the past. Whilst I hold nothing against you, personally, intellectually, I am, like Bertrand Russell before me, a humanist. Consequently, I cannot subscribe to the Christian ethos or dogma. Yes, yes, I remember our conversation that evening very well. Very cogently reasoned, I thought. Oh. <laughs> I, I remember your argument that Pascal and Calvin were, uh, Burks, I think you said. <laughs> it made a great impression on my wife. Did I say that? I'm almost terribly sorry. Not at all. One often gets carried away in a theological discussion. Yeah, but I should not have used language like that. But, but please, uh, explain to your wife that I was a little bit het up and your hospitality was on the generous side. And I was a wee bit Brahms and Liszt. <laughs> Brahms and Liszt. I shall tell her. Uh, no, Mr. Steptoe, the reason for my visit is quite different. Uh, frankly, I have come to ask a favour of you. Oh, anything. Please don't hesitate to ask. As you may know, this week we are celebrating the centenary of our church. You know what? Yes, 100 years of bringing the good word to the people of Shepherd's Bush. Yes, a great deal has changed since then. Yeah, you have a lot of competition from the Muslims now, don't you? <laughs> well, it's true. They were pouring out of that converted cinema last week, like a bus garage it was. I don't regard it as competition. All the great religions of the world are there for the glory of God. 
In my father's house, there are many mansions. Are oh, there? Well, we should put up a few round here. The hours and conditions are diabolical. Yes, I am cognizant of the problem. However... Yes, do go on, Vicar. So we have decided to publish a special centenary edition of our Paris magazine. Mm-hmm. What's a good idea? And I should be glad of any contributions that I can get. I thought so. How much do you want? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean articles. Articles for inclusion. My wife... I thought it would be rather nice if we had articles about some of the more exotic trades and professions that have been carried on in the parish throughout the years. Oh, we've had them round here. That place next door used to be a right old knocking yes, shop. Yes, <laughs> we did used to get a lot of noise from there. It was a wheelwright. Ah. And as you are one of the oldest established firms in the area, we wondered uh, whether one of you would care to write about the history of rag and boning in Shepherd's Bush. I should be delighted to do it. So would I. I far better think I'd better write it. Oh, I know more than you do. I know you don't. Sorry, you can't write as well as I can. I mean, I was, I was always top of my class in composition. You know that. I always used to get nine out of ten. I got a star once. <laughs> oh, yes, words. It's always been my strong point. Are oh, you leaving to me, Vicar? I want to do it. Oh, you can't do it. You have to do something else, won't you? I want to do the article. You're not going to do the article. I'm the artistic one in this house. Cobblers. You can't. <laughs> Who can't? You can't. I can spell that you can. Who can? I can. No, you can't. Oh, yes, I can. All right, then. Spell chrysanthemum. <laughs> C-H-R-I-S. <laughs> <laughs> it's a C-R... K-H-R-I-S. <laughs> <laughs> you're not an uncle. I use a word like chrysanthemum in an article about rag and boning, am I? That's where you're wrong, because that's the name of Charlie Harris's horse, chrysanthemum. I don't care. I won't mention him. You can't write an article on rag and boning without mentioning Charlie Harris. He'd be furious. His family's been in the business even longer than ours. Then I shall say Charlie Harris and his horse. Because you can't spell chrysanthemum. I can look it up in my dictionary. How can you look it up when you can't spell it? I'll get someone else to spell it for me, then I shall look it up. How do you spell Malibu? I'm not interested in spelling Malibu. That's bottles for all his horse. I'll give a toss whose horse it is. Yeah. How many horses and carts followed out of Philpott's coffin in 1928? 23. 36. You don't know nothing. You can't spell. You're not competent. I've been a rag and bone man all my life. For so on. I was a rag and bone man before you was born. Must have been a rag and bone man after your death. How do you know? I'll kill you if you don't shut up. <laughs> Why don't you both write it? Why don't you write it? I'm quick. I forgot she was there. Oh, it's, it's, it won't work. I mean, I, I can't collaborate with him. I mean, I, I come on, undertake work of, of, of a creative nature with someone who gets on your threatening bits as much as he does. <laughs> well, this calls for the judgment of Solomon. You gotta chop him in half. <laughs> Why don't you toss for it? You, Paul, Mr. Stepto. Kids. Tails, you lost. You lost. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. I've got to do it. You big soft Nelly, what are you? Let me get back to your cotton. I'm doing it. Don't get upset, Mr. Stepto. We'd still like a contribution from you. Would you? Of course. Anything? Of course, anything you like. Right, you're on. I'm going to do it now. Good night, Mr. Stepto, and thank you for the drop of the gold watch. Any time. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that, 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 oh, oh, I beg your pardon. I was composing. Uh, allow, allow me to see you out. Thank you very much. May I illustrate my article with, with the photographs? Oh, yes, yes, that would be delightful. You need karate with me, don't you? I'm so <laughs> excited. Oh, that was I'm, I'm sure you're going to be most pleased with it. I shall indeed. Yeah. Uh, my, my teacher, she was uh, always complimenting me on my literary effort. I, I was thinking of taking up journalism when I left school. But old misery guts there wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me do anything. Uh, well, good night, Mr. Stepto. I shall look forward to reading your article. Good night, Victor. Uh, good night, Mr. Stepto. Oh, uh, yes. Pity the poor sailors and fishermen. Are they still out there? <laughs> Good night, Mr. Stepton. This could be the start of a new career. Research, uh, reference books, uh, taped interviews, and photographs. I have photographed and interviewed every totter within two miles. I don't mess about, but I don't think I do it properly. 
I'm actually really written. Mind your own business. You haven't started, have you? Having a bit of a struggle, are you? Rather too rubby, it's all up here, mate. I know exactly what I'm gonna write. That's the question of getting it down, that's all. Flo Bell had much the same trouble. He said that every word was like tearing the flesh from his body. Mm. You go away and do yours, go on. I've done it. You've done it? Last week. What you done? Mind your own business. But can't be much good if you've done it that quickly. It's probably extremely fast, sir. Great works always take a long time. A Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Steptoe. It'll be 110 by the time you've finished. <laughs> A pale, wintry sun shone down out of an opalescent sky as a tired old cart horse... Yeah, well, in, in 1926, during the general strike, under my dad's leadership, the organisation... That's Charlie Ellis. ...the feed the general marches on route, so to speak. Leading liar. Turn that thing off. Well, he's telling lies. I tried to organise that. He wouldn't give you the drippings off his nose. <laughs> what else did he tell you? Oh, he gave me some marvellous material. It was wonderful, a human interest. All about how... When he got married, Charlie had nowhere to live. So he sent his dad to the pictures. And when he got back, his dad found that Charlie had put all his furniture out on a curb. The door was locked, and Charlie made his old dad go and live in the stable. Well, that's not true either. That was me and your grandfather. He's trying to get the credit for everything. He, that article has got to be a tissue of lies. All right then, all right then. I shall interview you and get your side of it. Uh, you, uh, uh, say, say something uh, into that. Just so I get a level. What did I say? Uh, anything. Uh, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Sausages, eggs and bacon. Sausages? Yeah. You said there weren't any sausages. <laughs> well, there weren't when I'd ate them. It was only six anyway. Six? <laughs> I could have had three of them. I don't want to just work here. I've been talking about with somebody inside of me other morning. You greedy, gutty. Look, are you going to interview me around you? I can't sit here all night arguing the toss with you. My time's valuable. I'm cooking a breakfast tomorrow morning, right? Uh, testing, testing, testing. One, two, three. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> His fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> yes, yes, that, that's all right. Um, but, uh, um, a Hundred Years of Totting by Harold K. Astepto. Interview a number 26er, Albert Astepto. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Astepto, uh, um... What are your earliest recollections of rag and pony in Shepherd's Bush? I'm not telling you. <laughs> what is the point of having an interview if, if, if you aren't going to say anything? I ain't writing your article for you. I'm not asking you to. I can't blind me. Boswell could hardly have written his life of Dr. Johnson if every time Boswell asked Johnson a question, Johnson said, I'm not telling you. <laughs> now then, we'll start again. You're just trying to pick my brains. I shall pick them straight out of your ears in a minute. <laughs> now then. Uh, Mr. Stepto. In your 70 years as a rack and bone man, you must have noticed many changes. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> huh? Well, what? What are they? <laughs> oh. oh, we used to have trams in them days. Yes. And we haven't got them now. <laughs> you try to take the slash. Oh. And stop mucking about. Uh... It must have been very difficult driving an horse and a cart in those days. Oh, yes. Dangerous, too. I remember once I had a heavy load, and I got me wheels caught in the tram lines at Marble Arch, and I had to go the whole way to Putney Depot before I could turn round. Could not they have stuck a number six up the horse's backside, twisted the points, and sent you all the way back to Shepherd's Bush? Are you calling me a liar? Yes. And if you don't take this seriously, I shall switch this machine off and fetch you a knuckle sandwich straight out of the Utah. All right? <laughs> Now tell me, Mr. Stepto, <laughs> bearing in mind that this is for a church magazine, consequently we don't want any filth, I realise that is placing you under an unfair handicap. Uh, can you recollect any interesting incidents in your long and varied career as a rag and bone man? Oh, yeah. I remember when I was seven, my dad brought me home in pigeon. Oh, that is nice. And then when we was hard up, I had to... Bring it down the market and flog it for a tanner. Oh, that is very sad. I flogged that pigeon 523 times before we was tumbled in. <laughs> <laughs> That's great! Great! That's exactly what I want. Have you got any more like that? Yeah! 
<laughs> yeah, I remember another time during the Depression when I was trotting down the cold old road. And an old biddy came out of our cross and she said, Hey, come over here. just finished reading your article, Mr. Septo, and it really is first class. Absolutely fascinating. Just what we wanted. No, no, I, I don't intend cutting it at all. I don't pretend to understand all the colloquialisms, but I'm sure the parishioners will. Yes, we're going to press today 5,000 copies. <laughs> Is that the parish magazine? It is. Are our bits in? They are. How oh, gives it look? I've been trying to get one everywhere. So have lots of people. I'm sold out, are they? No. They've been impounded by the police. <laughs> <laughs> After the first hour, of the first 500 copies being distributed, the vicarage was raided. <laughs> and the vicar was arrested on a charge of publishing obscene material likely to corrupt public morals. <laughs> I take it, sir, uh, your contribution was the crossword puzzle? That's right. <laughs> Is there anything wrong with it? No. Not until they filled it in. <laughs> filth, filth, filth. Right the way through. From one across to 38 down. A concentrated <laughs> square of obscenity, of filth, and I call pornography. Oh, it's not bad. It's not worse than these Scrabble games. <laughs> Three old ladies had to be treated for shock down the Derby and Chelsea. But well, if they didn't know the words, how did they fill them in? I know somebody will get filled in. I don't know what you're on about. The vicar didn't say nothing. No, of course he didn't. Poor old devil. He didn't understand the clues. That'll only answers. <laughs> Thank you very much again. At seven nights, I'd grow up on my part. Now going up in smoke from the incinerator down the local nick. There, you've got your article in. What's the matter with you? Yes, sir, I have. And may I add that this, along with several other copies that managed to elude the police dragnet, are now changing hands at twice the price of a school kids edition of Oz. <laughs> oh, so good to my room. <laughs> I've uh, just got three things to say to you. What's that? Six across, thirteen across, <laughs> and twenty-eight down. <laughs> Across. I'm not as pregnancy like that. I'm your father. Not according to 16 down. <laughs> you filthy fuck. 